until last. But luckily they never climbed the stairs, so I saw somebody coming up the stairs or through the lift who's just arrived for this presentation by now. <laughs> so, so thanks Adam for inviting me along. Uh, this was a last minute thing. So it's a bit of a curveball this one. Um, but uh, I'll just tell you about, about what we do and who I am and uh, happy to have some content help as people. So I, my name is Simon, I run Quodio. We're a service that matches VC and P firms with entrepreneurs globally. Uh, we are actually going to be hiring some UI UX people and engineers soon. Because I'm really kind of paid externally. We've got our own CTO at the moment, so that's sort of by the by. But um, I just want to give you a very quick run through. I don't want to take too long. We've got the extra time in the graveyard shift here. You can never leave the building or jump off the edge or something. But um, so, uh, no parachutes attached. But, um, but uh, that's why my ex mother in law is very, very short. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, she actually loved this as a side story. She lives in Australia. There was once a shark attack near where we used to live. And, Shark getting that worse off than she did, but anyway. Um, but uh, back, back to Earth. So, uh, back to the UK. So, um, anyway, so um, at the end of today, uh, if you want to contact me, I've got some business cards and stuff, also some reports that some of the stuff I'll discuss comes from. I've got some hard copies you can take away from tonight, uh, or you can email me and uh, email them through to you. Um, so, I, my background is I used to work in venture, I worked for a couple of major VC firms, I worked in banking, property. Advisory, all kind of bits and bobs, all in you, lost my hair, a long time ago. Um, and uh, that's pretty the mother, big mother and all. But um, anyway, but uh, accelerated afterwards. Uh, but um, anyway, so I, I worked in these different areas and I co founded this business because I was very frustrated by uh, how much time and effort is involved raising money. So a lot of you end up working for businesses and it won't really be your concern, or that even if you work for a world of startup, you might be able to raise venture capital money, in many cases the jobs you have will be in venture funded businesses and you may have ideas about what you want to go and do individually at some point because obviously there's much talk about entrepreneurship. Um, so I'll just tell you a bit about what's going on in the venture industry. We work globally, um, so we work with the UK with a set of leagues like India, we work in the US, uh, Israel, as Israel three weeks ago, Spain, all kind of places. So it's a very sort of global industry, the venture capital industry. The UK remains, despite all the Political uh, problems back and forth remains probably one of the most important markets, definitely in sort of tech, earlier stage businesses in, in the world. But it's important if you want to try and talk to venture capitalists to understand kind of what they're after uh, and what's going on. Because, like you said about the job, if you go and you have no clue, um, it's difficult enough to get through to venture capitalists. There are ways you can improve that. I don't want to talk too much about how business, but that's something to be trying to seek to do. But um, if you get in the door, you can't blow it. If you do, you're kind of never going to come back again. Uh, and there's a lot of word of mouth, so it's kind of blown. So it's very useful to, to know, to do your own due diligence and homework on the venture industry if you're going to try to drag it. Um, so, I mean, if you have raised money, I don't know if ask for a show of hands up this time because of the boy down here by now. Uh, but, um, but basically, a lot of people have tried try to raise money, find it very hard to work out, uh, I'm sure some of you have tried to raise money, find it very hard to work out who to go to. Who, not only who might be able to put money into your business, but actually who might be the best fit. Because again, you have the old marriage scenario, hopefully we're still going to process it, your age, but, um, but you know, the average venture capital to entrepreneur relationship lasts longer than the average marriage. And they'll spend longer with the venture capitalist than with your other half. So, um, whichever, whichever kind of proclivity you have. So, um, so um, the, you need to make sure you might find the right kind of person, because you have to might make sure you work with them very closely, and that's a side for this. I'm discussing with an American entrepreneur today. Um, and we found in Silicon Valley that women entrepreneurs don't want to work with women VCs. I mean, some research. But we'll throw that. Has anybody got an idea why? It's not at all what you'd expect. The massively underfunded compared to their male counterparts? Sort of on the right track. Would we run out of the door? Quick word out, it's the quick word out. Um, no, what it is, is it turned out that uh, women entrepreneurs, are loads of women entrepreneurs now in the US, they don't relate to women venture capitalists because most people, by the time they get to be in charge of venture capital firms, are in their 50s or 60s, and most females who've been successful in the US have not come through the normal entrepreneurial track that women go through. They're engineers and consultants and investment bankers. And the younger female entrepreneurs do not relate to those women in the So, in fact, when women want to try and work with women in the valley, use the worst return. There's a similar 
examples of ethnic communities trying to work with each other, we get the, the worst returns. Indian venture capitalists or Indian entrepreneurs get the worst returns for the part of business school. So um, you need to really find the right kind of match, not only to find funding, but find the right kind of match. And we found through research we did that entrepreneurs, as well as venture capitalists, spend a huge amount of time and effort money, what we call transaction costs, wasted trying to find those matches, trying to find where to go. And in many cases, entrepreneurs are on the wrong track altogether. And I've got a German friend who says to me, every time he comes to London, meets British entrepreneurs, are always about raising money, not about running their businesses. And what you want to go and do is entrepreneurs run your business. You want to spend your whole life raising money. So there's no business otherwise. So uh, it's not the business raising money uh, for most people. So you need to try and find where your best funder might be. And in most cases in the UK, there are lots of opportunities to get funding. But it might be you find the best funder for the kind of stuff you do is actually not in the UK. It might be in Spain, it might be in the West Coast, it might be in Israel, it might be in cyber. Um, makes sense to be in Tel Aviv or Washington in many cases for, for the best funding and best venture capital firms, as much as over here. So you know you try and find what's right for you. And often people want to go and raise money, they think, oh, venture capital is the thing. And it turns out, in fact, that they've heard about it, it sounds like a nice idea, but they have no idea what to do. So I've been at events at the London Partners this morning, the mayor's office who we work with, and um, I was on a panel with so I took a pseudonym on the one ago, a dragon's den dude, a bit of a character. Uh, he hates you can see, and uh, so we had some sparring match. But we had lots of people saying, oh, I've raised 500,000 quid, I went to the VC, they wouldn't talk to me. And then I heard that in the UK, there are a few VCs who invest 500,000 quid, but most of them within two weeks, three plus. So you're wasting time talking to them. So go and find another form of funding. It doesn't mean there's no funding. This means wait your time and bide your time. Because if you go and send a business plan at the wrong time, you get like a negative score effect. You're on some sort of CRM somewhere at a VC, and you won't get back in again when you've got a great business plan. So people spend tens of thousands of pounds and hundreds of hours trying to stuff around finding money. So um, think about it quite carefully before we do it. And I'm not sure I try to plug the business too much, but we're releasing our product in a few months. So if you do log it uh, at the moment on the site, you sort of free, free sign up for the free product when it, when it restarts. Um, but um, there's a couple of quotes there from entrepreneurs. I don't know if anybody knows them, which is a very impressive tech star, Grant. Um, she's doing very well indeed at the moment. She's saying basically raising money is an easy process. Um, and find the right investors even, even harder. And then this guy, Julian Rage, is a really interesting character. She's a, a business angel of the year. Okay, business angels of the year. Um, he started, he was actually in the army, actually. went to what was, became Vodafone, because Vodafone came out of army communications, which is the whole thing for me. And um, he has realized how difficult it was trying to raise money, whether it be with angels, we don't work so much with angels or what he but um, etc. So you need to understand what's going on in the industry and find the right tools and data to be able to do that, which is what we're on a mission to go and do. Um, so this report here, I've got a few copies, the half copy, but I've also emailed to people which slide, um, is research did. So when we, so we build our own tools, we also build our own data. And one of the interesting things we do is we go and eyeball venture capital firms in their offices. And we ask them to get some uh, business school students in to go and interview them. And we ask all kinds of difficult questions, which they wouldn't answer normally because we're doing in conjunction business school, kind of stealth model, to get in the door. Also lower cost. <laughs> we, do, we, we do feed the students occasionally. Um, so, uh, actually, it's interesting because we, we, by saying today, it's something we, we actually send them to a cool place as well. So we send students to sort of Valley and to Japan, we're going to interesting place to go interview venture capital firms. We work with 30 business schools around the world. And we work with this guy, Action, from Cambridge Business School, Judge Business School, last year, in the last year. And he interviewed a bunch of VCP firms, not just early stage, but later stage firms in the UK, and some crowd funders and others. And then we sent on India afterwards to interview some, um, some VCs in India, which was actually really fascinating. There's about 20 some VCs in India who wanted to invest into the UK last year, the end of last year. It's not, not just pre breaks it's post breaks It's so, so to venture capital study, there's all the money that's waiting to be sort of proved up and syndicated with UK VCs and maybe there's no access here coming from India. So there was a huge opportunity to fund that. But anyway, we go and interview these firms and we ask what kind of basic statistical stuff, but we also ask them what kind of insights about how they invest, what trends they see coming up. Because when you're trying to raise money from a VC, they raise, but they themselves have to raise their own money. That's what people don't understand where money comes from. So it comes from pension funds, it comes from sovereign funds, you know, governments of Singapore, the Gulf, various countries, etc. And the VCs, when they to raise their money, have to sort of say what they're raising for, where they're going to spend it, the kind of sectors they're going to spend. It's very hard to set and guess 
the next five to ten years, you're raising a fund. And they have to deploy the money quite quickly, but it has to be, have to see what's going to happen over the next five, ten years, they raise that money. So we asked what kind of questions about that and about some more subtle type of stuff about other investors. So we interviewed these firms here, they're up to 20 to 30 pounds of sort of fund, funds under management. That's how much money they've raised. There's a whole range of different firms um, and some uh, uh, some, some crowd funds we interviewed from Seeders and other things, um, and a couple of trade associations. Um, AdTech, WPP Ventures, WPP, the, the biggest ad groups in the world. Uh, we we've actually ever interviewed them. Um, and a whole bunch of other sort of firms in, in the UK. I think the PE stuff that's a later stage, uh, sort of standard presentation where you just and to do some uh, cool presentation off the shelf. Um, but what's interesting to you is the left hand side. So when we interviewed BC and P firms last year, in the last year, what were the sectors they were specifically trying to invest in? So if you if you've got something that doesn't match this, it's gonna make it hard for you to raise money. The top very well Google business plan says we're gonna raise this amount of money, do all these one marvelous things, but if you are in a bubble compared to where people invest in, they're not going to invest. And again, it might be elsewhere. It might be different forms of funding. It might be crowdfunding or other kind of things. But you've got to see what people are actually looking to invest in. It's quite hard to find that sometimes. So the key sectors obviously are AI, cyber, fintech, obviously big thing we are. Healthcare is a biotech. You know, through the aged care homes, a huge kind of array of different kind of things. Re renewables are still quite a good thing. So if you're doing something that, you know, maybe blockchain might be the next thing. So they haven't raised funds for blockchain. It's was actually spoke to last year. So they raised the money two, three years ago when blockchain really wasn't an issue, it wasn't a, an idea, it was a, a practical idea to invest in. So that would be an extra rate of funds. So you've got to be aware of what's out there, you might be too early or too late for the market. There's a classic thing also comes up discussing them today, which is that entrepreneurs typically think, because that VC invests in a business like mine, they can they, they might invest in me or my business. But they won't usually because they don't usually in UK invest in multiple similar businesses because they see the being competitive effects. So if you buy in your business plan to VC, they'd like to see you know, their actual competition. They'll see your business plan, they're up to all that they meant to behave themselves, to the, how they manage things, who you know, It goes in some great repository. So, um, so you be very careful about, you know, just because it looks like someone might, you might think, it's quite subtle about what it actually does or doesn't. Um, returns, quite interesting, I think, again, without going into too much detail here, the IRM is a lot of return. In terms of investments, they're not as high on early stage investment where everybody in this room probably sits than you might imagine, and they're underperforming radically in the UK. That causes a problem because what it means is when they try and raise their own money or they're trying to report back to investing in them, if, if early stage ventures aren't doing so well, it could start to slow things down into the pipeline of cash coming through all these new businesses, prospective businesses who you work with now because if they want to follow on rounds. The business that you're working for so you can raise 20 30 million quick, you've got to raise your next round off before you go to other things, it may constrict that to a certain extent. Um, and that's, that's quite a problem. When you, of course, you pitch a venture capital firm, you don't say, oh, well, your average rate return to 15%, therefore I want my, my business plan shows 15%. Venture capitalists famously only get you know, two out of 10 recent big success stories. Um, and, and every 10 they invest in, there was thousands out there they don't invest in. So, Business they invest in, they're looking to have much higher returns than this kind of 15 or the typical 30 percent. So your business plan needs to look like you're going to get like a five times return, 100 percent IRR or something in your business plan. Not this is mere 15 or 30 percent, because on average it's 15 percent to feed as business as they can, etc. Um, time to exit is quite interesting. So exit is when you sell a business. So all venture capitalists have a view that you're trying to sell your business. Because that's how they make the money. It's not because of evil, because they want to kind of basically uh, that's how they get paid. They, 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 they get their bonuses, they get their effectively, they, they carry and the, their own funders, the pension plan, etc., fund them, want to see the return because they can't monetize it on the kind of cash out of ones. But the old fashions of dividend things are private equity rather than venture things. So the time to exit, which is how much time it takes from starting to invest to when you sell your, your stake in that business. To those funds to, to their, their own investors is getting longer. So it's actually having early stage is it can take up to 10 years, nine, nine or 10 years, to sell a business when they first invest, which is a very long time compared to what people expect. So what people think, oh, that's a 
success in two years later. That's very, very rare. Most of the success stories are quite a while before the trade sale or IPO or whatever else it might be. So if you want to be an entrepreneur and you venture back, you're going to be in it for 10 to 20 years sometimes before you reach that success, which takes some lot of persistence. Um, that's before you, that's even once you've got the money, it could take several years up and running, get seed money, etc. before you move on to venture. Um, there is a perception that maybe those times will, will slightly decrease in terms of how much time it takes to exit, but they, they, they're very optimistic sometimes as guys compared to what you might imagine. Um, again, the left hand side is maybe interesting for you. What's incredibly important when people invest in early stage businesses is the team and the technology, or you know, what the code might be, etc. Um, so um, they're interested in markets. You know, you've got to think about a market you know, to sell this thing to. People are buying my, my product, etc. Uh, they're interested in intellectual property, but intellectual property is generated by most of these businesses anyway nowadays. Um, but they really are very interested in the team, and it can be very useful if you want to start up your own business to find somebody who's been funded before, or been rounded before, etc. There are some great businesses where people have never been funded before and become incredibly successful, but and some have been successful never are again. But often there's a sort of predictor of success effectively, and it does help if you've worked in industry and then go into something similar. So you say, I started this business because I've worked in this and gave you this idea. You have some kind of domain knowledge. There's an awful lot of people placing around the place who have no background at all. So they can be successful, but in many cases, they won't be. The other thing that's not in these slides is that often the friends which VC are talking to, but some VCs are very interested in one aspect and they give the monkeys to something else. So if you get like 12 out of 10 of the team, Business, they'll sort out and build the rest of the team and have a, get your product to market. Other VCs are more focused on looking at 8 out of 10 effectively for each major criteria because they want to make sure that if, on average, they know what to do. So it depends on which VC you're marrying up to as to who, um, you know, what they're looking for. Um, there's been a bit of a shift to the backgrounds of VCs. It's going to do this marriage thing about what's the match. You don't want people the same as you, you want people to understand you, but also you can help develop what you're doing and support, and nurture. So there's actually an enormous amount of nurture because VCs sit in your board and they kind of help mentor you in, in, in the business. Um, increasingly, there are people with like, entrepreneurial backgrounds again, recycling back into VC, which has been really good. Because historically, VC was very good at investment bankers and consultants who could run these amazing models but actually had no idea how to run a business. And there were all kind of clashes that occurred from that. Increasingly, we've been successful in business. Are we starting to, well, the first people doing this kind of sign of murder. Yeah. And he had started over book pages, and book pages became Amazon.co.uk. He sold the first non US uh, bookseller online to Amazon, which was called book pages. And he then went on from there to go into like, episode, episode one. And episode one's been phenomenally successful. You can see it in the bank of a whole bunch of really clinical cool businesses they backed. Because he's done it, he knows what to do, and he understands a number of aspects about the business. So when you're looking to find a venture capitalist, you always have to do your due to them like an employer. Do I want to work with this person? What we don't say officially in the service, and we don't close the door, is we, we call it the asshole effect. So we're going to use the <laughs> official call it. It's not a question of I'm an asshole. Yes. Uh, no, <laughs> it's like it's not at all. Anyway, so, um, but, uh, so, um, yeah, so what happens is that when we go into the as we see, the students can effectively identify what the different traits are of the different venture capitalists and what do you want to work with people. Because some of these people are so, I think it was almost used, but they're so retentive that you wouldn't want to work with them. But some people might like to work with that kind of style. Um, but you need to have empathy for the investors you have. And when you go through the tough times, as all early stage businesses do, you need to work with somebody you can work with. And sometimes you go through these venture capital firms that become bigger and bigger and richer and richer and larger and larger. And you find that actually they've got no idea what you do because they've become like pension funds rather than like entrepreneurs. So I used to work for BBC in Cambridge. And we just put five million quid on the management which was run by fantastic entrepreneurs who've done it. And we've gone to campus and we find people who were electronic engineers, really cool, rich people, who you get it back. And then we started one of the London offices, which originally was quite nice because it was basic. Better office because we raise more money. It's raised several hundred million pounds by this age. And then you start to become like a money manager. And so we have entrepreneurs come and go, I don't identify this person. This is a German street, and I just don't get it. It's a James, it doesn't relate to me. And that whole sentiment of waiting for the lobby can 
people are dealing with more people. So you know, then you've got to find that real match. So I'm down 20 minutes now. Yeah, oh sorry, <laughs> wishing on, wishing on, sorry, it's easy to the gravy on shit. I won't go on too much further. It's just important for you also to know what, how much competition is. Because they always put like a wall of money. But actually, we found a couple of years ago that 500 business plans for each WGBC for each one of our investments, and that's 1,200. So the, the, the odds are really, really difficult to go and raise money, whatever people say. All right, if you, if you want to come, you know, my details there. I've got some copies of reports, sorry, more than times. I think it's quite visible there. But, um, but if you want to get a copy of this report, I've got a few spares and hard copy, which are old fashioned. And I can email people, otherwise, you can sort of download some of the website. Cool, thank you. Thank you.